Welcome to HTML Fundamentals Part 1. This is Part 1 in a series dedicated to understanding what is HTML, how to write it, and sort of seeing it in action. So that at the end of it, you feel much more comfortable when you get some content and you need to convert it into an HTML page. So the first real question that we're answering with this video is, what is HTML? So, what does it stand for is Hypertext Markup Language. And what, is those, what do those words mean? Well, hypertext, we all know whether you have, you've all used, whether you know it or not, which is just basically clicking on a link on a web page and it takes you to another web page. Markup is what you really came here to probably learn, which is how to write HTML so that we can mark up content on a page. And then language. Well, it's a language, so it has a bunch of rules about how you do this. You just can't sort of mark up the page willy-nilly. There's a series of rules and syntax and so forth that you have to learn when you're learning this language in order to be able to write proficiently in it. And it's actually one of the harder parts of it at first, but as you get used to it and get the hang of it, it really does start to get a lot easier. But you might be asking, well, what is it really? more than just a name, how does it fit into everywhere? So what we're going to do is take a 30,000 foot high view of it for a second here. So let's see how HTML fits into the bigger picture of web design. So there are really three big things that you're going to learn to write. These are all text files. You can um, write all of these in a text editor and they're the text files that you're going to write to make your website. This doesn't include other things you might make like images and video and so forth. But in terms of writing uh, text and writing in a language, these are what you have to use for your site. HTML, which is also known as the markup, really describes the page and its content. It says, here is the page, here is what is on the page, including describing uh, which style sheets and JavaScript you're going to use. The CSS designs how the page looks. So, and the JavaScript uh, dynamicizes, that's an, a word I just made up, the page. So we have describing, designing, and making the page dynamic. Uh, so JavaScript's role is really to be able to take both your HTML and your CSS, and it can rewrite it and reconfigure it to change your page as the user is using it. But out of all the three, the only one that's absolutely necessary for the page is HTML. The other ones you can use or not use, and obviously they make the web and your page a lot better, but really HTML is the foundation of web design. It's what everything else is built upon. So, in addition to being the foundation of web design, it's also the first thing that your browser loads. So everything else that the page is going to load, the CSS, the JavaScript, the images, the video, all of it is going to load after your HTML loads. Now let's look at the another couple of ideas as well. So there's two other big ideas I want to cover. One is that HTML describes the content and the structure of a page. All right? Nothing more nothing less. Content and the structure. And we'll talk in a minute about exactly what that means by the content and the structure. The next one is that HTML is valid, semantic, and standards based. Now actually it could be HTML should be valid, semantic, and standards based because it's possible to write HTML that's not those things. But if you want to be professional, you want to get paid to do websites, you should learn how to write HTML that is valid, semantic, and standards-based. If you have no idea what those things mean, we're going to cover them in a little bit. First, though, let's talk a little bit more about what I mean when I say HTML describes the content and the structure of the page. So it uses tags to describe things. Everything on the page must be in some kind of tag. The next video in the series is going to detail exactly what goes where and how you write those tags, but for now, the main thing to remember is that everything must be marked up must be in a tag. And not only does it describe the content of the page, as in your titles, your text, what images you have, and so forth, but it also describes the structure of the page. 
what kind of HTML it is. So if you look at line one there where it says exclamation point doc type, there's a number of different flavors of HTML, HTML4, HTML5, XHTML. That doc type tells you, well, what kind of XHTML are you using? It's very important. Uh, the next one under that in line two is the HTML tag. That actually goes around all the rest of the content of the page. You can't see the closing one. All tags have an opening, not all tags, but um, many tags have an opening and a closing tag. And after that on line three is the head. So the head part in, in these sort of first, this first section here is really describing the structure of the page, saying what kind of page it is, um, that it is an HTML page, and in the head we get things like what kind of CSS files we get to add in, so you can add JavaScript files in that place, uh, and in other places as well, and even the language you're using and all that, all that kind of good stuff goes in this top part describing this structure of the page, what's also called metadata. Metadata just means data about data, so this is data about your page. Then the next part there in the body starting there on line 13 is where the HTML starts describing the content of the page saying okay here is a title, here is a paragraph, here is an image going in there and we also use tags to group elements together. So you might have a title, a paragraph and an image that are all grouped together in for one section of your page and so you need a tag to group those all those other tags together so it's sort of tags within tags that everything on your page gets marked up in a tag so moving on to the next part HTML is valid semantic and standards based so let's address each one of those like I said if you want to be professional if you want to get paid to write HTML then you need to learn to write pages that are all three of these things now what the valid page means is that just you have no errors in those tags that you wrote down. So as you wrote down the tags on the page and you marked things up, you didn't forget a closing tag or misspell one or do anything else like that. And there are programs that will help you do that and find your validation errors. The next one, semantic, has to do with matching up the meaning of the page meaning of the tag, sorry, with the content that is inside of it. So the tags must match the content. Titles should be marked up as titles, paragraphs as paragraphs, lists as lists. A group of elements that are related should have tags around them to show that they're related. So meaning is important and it's different than validity. You could put a paragraph tag around something that's supposed to be a title, but in your page would still be valid, there'd be no validation errors, but it wouldn't be semantic. There wouldn't be the right meaning um, inside that tag that it's supposed to have. And this will probably make a little bit more sense when we get into actually writing the HTML and seeing examples of this as well. So the last one is standards-based. In the most straightforward sense, of writing a standards-based HTML means writing it according to one of the HTML standards that the W3C has put forth. So when I said there's different flavors of HTML, 4, 5, XHTML, those flavors are determined and published, the standards are published, by the W3C, or the World Wide Web Consortium. Here's a screenshot of their website, and that's the website down there. So they are the body who makes the standards, and as a, a budding web developer, this is one that you should pay attention to because they are the sort of rule makers for your industry. Now, the, w, the World Wide Web Consortium is an international group. Uh, it not only writes standards for HTML, but CSS and other web technologies as well. So if you were writing a browser, like Chrome or Firefox or IE or Safari, you're supposed to write it so that it follows those standards. It doesn't always happen, but it's getting better. People who write, write web pages are also supposed to follow those standards. So in theory, uh, all of the HTML you write would work in all of the browsers. Now even if reality doesn't always exactly match up with this, it's much, much easier in the long run, and you'll be much more likely that your pages will work across a number of different browsers if you do follow the standards. Standards-based design also kind of refers to an approach to writing web pages that includes things like not using tables for layout, 
not using proprietary browser features. That means sometimes browsers write things that only work in their browsers, certain flavors of HTML or CSS. And separating the design of the page into the H out into the CSS so that the HTML stays with the content and the structure, and the CSS is where the design comes, and, and a number of other different elements. Jeffrey Zeldman was sort of one of the first champions of that with his book Designing with Web Standards, which is now in its third edition actually. Uh, and it was one of the first to sort of say, stop using these methods and proprietary features of browsers and methods that aren't based on how this semantic meaning is supposed to be for the tag and the element and so forth. And it's one now that started out as a small movement and now it's one really that is expected of you if you're a web developer. So to go back again, uh, we have our semantic valid standards based pages. We also have HTML describing the content and structure of the page and that is really the foundation of web design. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and to learn more about actually writing HTML, watch the next video in the series.